Welcome back to the channel. I know it's probably the end of January by the time you're seeing this, but I do want to wish you a very happy new year. This will be the first vlog covering the new year. It feels like a blank slate. It's very wonderful feeling, especially if you've seen the last couple of vlogs. They've been higher stakes. They've been outside of my comfort zone and I've played subpar, I think, personally. I don't want to be too hard on myself, but I think a lot of it has to do with some risk aversion. So my goal is to be playing more small to medium stakes tournaments and cash games. All poker coaches will tell you don't study too much without playing at the same time and the reason they tell you that is because there's this huge gap between knowing something about poker and then actually being able to pull the trigger at the table so that is my big quest for the next couple of months is to be able to execute the plays that I know to be correct in the moment hopefully that'll have some good results today is a $600 buy-in at the win it's squarely in my wheelhouse so I'm happy to go fire let's go buy in All right, to kick things off, let's play our multiple choice game. I'll give you a few options for my opponent's hand. You can play along with them and see if you guessed it right by the end of the hand. All right, we started with 30,000 in chips, 800 is the big blind, and I open ace jack off suit under the gun one to 1800. Just under the gun two makes the call. So we go heads up to an ace four four rainbow flop. And my only information on this particular player is in the one orbit since I've sat down, two times he has value bet very thinly when checked to. Like probably almost too thin, like he's not getting called by worse. So that's who we're up against, my only info on the player. I check it over to him and unfortunately he doesn't take the bait, he checks it back. The turn is a seven of clubs. There's a backdoor flush draw that comes in on the turn. I think that I probably should just continue checking at this point because I know that I'll get value from a guy who value bets really thin if he did pot control with something like seven sevens through nines. I think that if he did pot control top pair with a medium-ish kicker, he would also bet that. And flush draws as well will bet maybe to turn their hands into a bluff. So I think I should check again on this turn. I don't though in game, I decide to go for some value and I throw out a bet of 3000. Luckily my opponent makes the call. And so we go to a river, which is the biggest brick ever. It's the offsuit deuce. At this point, I think that he still has like a medium-ish hand or he has missed club draws. That, that's kind of what I'm thinking. So I end up checking in game Game, and that's only because of this player type. And thankfully he throws out a bet of seven thousand. So he does follow through on the river, which I was hoping he would do. And since he did go on the larger side, I don't really see any reason to reopen the action. So I just make the call. Take your final guesses. If you guess that he had pocket kings, I don't know how you did that, but that's what my opponent showed up with. He was slow playing pre-flop, didn't like the ace on the flop, and then decided to value bet it on the river after the line that I took. So congrats if you picked pocket kings, you know these $600 MTT players way better than I do. I, I never would have put him on that. After that, I get ace jack again and bust a player out who had ace nine suited in a short stack. So right away, our stack is climbing and we're about average. Even though I'm four hours late to this tournament, we are at average stack going into the next level. All right, if you didn't get that last multiple choice, try your hand at this one. It's gonna get really spicy. <laughs> so I look down in the low jack at pocket aces. The blinds have gone up to 1K now. So I make it 2,200 to go. The most active player at my table is in the big blind and decides to make the call. So heads up, the dealer puts out the king, jack, jack, two club flop. So once big blind checks to me, I'm gonna be c-betting this flop a lot, especially now that I have a really good hand. There's a lot of draws out there. So I bet 2000. I think I should size up a little bit here, but that's what I did in game. My opponent does not think that that's enough and it makes it 6,500 to go. With an over pair against a guy who either has some sort of combo draw or a king or a jack, which beats me, I decide to just make the call. I don't wanna three bet this flop and only be getting all my chips in against a jack. So to keep in all worse hands, I decide to just call. The turn is a seven of diamonds and my opponent does not slow down. He bets 10,000 on this turn, about half the pot, and I only have 30,000 to start this turn. So it's getting a little bit dicey. He's still representing all the same hands that he had on the flop. So I'm gonna continue with just a call. The river comes off. 
another seven. This time it's the seven of clubs. So the front door flush gets in there as well. It's not looking great. And I think that if he had a king at this point, he would just slow down and check it over to me. So when he goes all in, he puts me all in for my remaining 21K. I decide that this does not look great. He either has complete air, like that just turned his hand into a bluff from the beginning and was just like, I'm getting after this pot. Or he has a combo draw, like a flush draw that got there on this river, made a flush and is going for value against a king or aces. It's a little thin, <laughs> or he has a jack. Honestly, I think some of his flushes would slow down on this river because of the double pair board and I could have a jack. So that made me a little suspicious that I'm not sure if he's going to be value betting like this with a flush because that takes away a lot of his value hands and puts this bet into a lot of like his bluff hands. But what are his bluffs? I'm not really sure. I don't know much about this player other than the fact that he's pretty active. Oh, so after a long, long, long tank, I eventually muck my hand. And I might have faked you guys out a little bit with this multiple choice because I didn't see his hand, but he flashed his hand quickly and my na and I didn't see it, but my neighbor said he saw a seven of hearts. I'm like, what? Seven of hearts? I don't know what he's raising me with on the flop. I guess he just had one of those air ball hands, but that means he did backdoor into a kind of low boat, low full house with Jack, Jack, seven, seven. Oh, hi, hi, hi. So I have no idea how I would, I would ever have put him on a seven, a hand with a seven in it, but that's what my neighbor said he saw. Kind of faked you guys out with that multiple choice. I'm not sure actually 100% what he had, but it did have a seven of hearts in it, according to my neighbor. All right, you guys, third and final multiple choice. I won't be faking you out this time. This one is for real. I know what my opponent had in this one. All right, I have pocket kings under the gun one and decide to raise it up to 2000. So I make it 2000. My friend from the ace jack hand makes the call under the gun one. And big blind is a new player who sat down. He also makes the call as well. Three ways the dealer puts out queen nine deuce rainbow flop. Pretty great flop for pocket kings, multi-way. And when the big blind checks to me, I decide to slow play this and check it over to my under the gun one friend. He's known to put chips in the pot with second pair or worse. And if he has a queen, he'll certainly put money in the pot and then I can get a check raise in. So I check it over to him. And unfortunately he doesn't take the bait for a second time. He checks it back. The turn is a six of spades. Now the big blind leads for 7,000, almost a pot size bet into two other opponents. This looks pretty strong. And honestly, I think I should just jam it all in considering it doesn't have that much more behind. So I wish I would have done that in game because the logic is that if I think he's super strong, I should just get all the chips in and raise and not worry about being balanced or whatever. But in game, I thought, okay, this is a huge bet. I'm gonna call and hope that the guy behind me was pot controlling with something that he can also call. That doesn't happen though. He gets out of there. And so it's just the two of us on the 10 of hearts river. The flush draws on the turn brick out. There are some straights that come in obviously, but when my opponent slows down with a check now and he only had 15,000 behind, I don't think that he has any straights. He would have just continued with his aggression. I feel very confident I have the best hand. So I put him all in for his last 15,000. He snap flips his hand over to Muck and he shows he had, drum roll, Ace Deuce of Spades. <laughs> so if you guessed Ace Deuce of Spades, congrats, you are correct. So yeah, even though we had a little bit of a setback with the Aces, the Kings, propelled us back in the right direction. First hand back from break, I pick up nine to seven offsuit in the small blind when it's folded around to me and we're at 1K 1500 blind. So you only have to put out an extra 500 chip to make the call. Sometimes I would raise this, but this the big blind is really short. So I landed on just completing. Big blind decides to check. It's a new player with starting stack. I don't have any reads so far on this guy. Flop comes out nine, nine, four rainbow. So we absolutely smash this flop, but it's pretty dry and and if I do continue with a bet on this flop, I'd be targeting ace highs, good suited, big cards, pairs. And I think all of those types of hands would have raised my limp pre-flop. So I might just get a lot of folds with a bet. So I decided to slow play and check it over to him. Luckily, my opponent bets 5,000 into a pot of 4,500. Really good news. But since I have a nine, I think it's really hard for him to also have trips. And I think he might just have a lot of bluffs. So I decide to call. The turn is an ace of diamonds. 
I check playing in flow, and this time my opponent slows down and checks it back. The river is another four. So interesting card because you're just going to be chopping a lot unless somebody has a pair or an ace. So for that reason, I decided to entice him with a small lead of 5,000. <laughs> so it's kind of a cutesy bet, but I wanted to bet a size where a four and an ace will definitely consider raising if I made it this small. If I go too big, then they'll just have an easy decision on their hands. But going this size, potentially will get a raise and maybe get called by a very curious hand that just doesn't want to fold and wants to make the call for the chop. So I landed on a size of uh, 5k and my opponent to my surprise calls very quickly and when I turn my hand over he has a four. <laughs> he has four deuce of diamonds. So he went huge on the flop to protect and when he made a boat on the river just didn't even raise my tiny sizing. So good on him. He didn't lose too too much considering he got boat under boated and only had 20 blinds and yeah that's how we start the post dinner break spin up blinds are up now to 2000 for the big blind under the gun is a newer player and just limps in i'm under the gun too with pocket queens and less than 25 big blinds obviously i'm going to be raising it up it folds all the way around to the big blind who i cannot believe we haven't talked about yet in this vlog he's kind of new ish to the table but he's got all the chips he's in a ton of pots but i've noticed that kind of post flop he plays a little bit straightforward so yes he's calling really wide pre-flop and kind of wide on the flop but then he's not really raising or turning things into bluffs too often so that's my note on him moving on for the rest of this hand under the gun who was the original limper just folds so the flop comes out ace four deuce rainbow it's just me and the big blind he checks over to me and i decide to slow down and check the a sideboard the turn comes a three of spades and now this guy decides to check a second time here is where i think i could have got my value i checked in game but i think i could get some value here because if he did have a five or if he had a decent ace he probably would have led the turn so i think i missed out on some value on this turn spot the river is a king of hearts and now it doesn't feel great either. He checks again, and even here I might be able to squeeze out some, but it's a lot closer on this river. So I don't mind the fact that in game, I decided to check it back. He does show down pocket tens, and we scoop in a slightly smaller pot than I would have been hoping to play with such a strong hand preflop. All right, you guys, we found this cozy little corner. Sorry if it's a little loud, but um, a quick update. We are on the last break of the night, 30 away from the money, and I have a little less than 20 big blinds. So way below average stack. So we just need to find a couple of double ups. And I'm at the perfect table to find them because they're really splashy, giving a lot of action. And yeah, hopefully some of those chips come my way. And I find the perfect spot when Lojack opens the 7,000. He's been in there with a lot of stuff. Cutoff makes the call. And I'm in the small blind with pocket sevens. I've got a little less than 20 big blinds. It feels kind of close, but not when the first razor has been so active. So I go all in for 56K. When it folds back to the low jack, he does put the chips in. He makes the call, cut off snap folds, and I see we're up against ace jack offsuit. So we're in a big flip. This is really crucial. Let's see if we can hold. Not even a club on the turn. What a world. And with that river, it's official. We have over 120K in our stack. Feels really good. It's a very nice time for it. We can feel secure as we cruise to the money. Then I isolate King Queen suited over to Chronic Limpers. They both make the call, but then check fold to my little C bet on an ace high board, surrendering the pot over to me and adding more to our stack. Anyway, in this one, under the gun limps, <laughs> the cutoff limps as well. I ISO with pocket kings from the small blind. Unfortunately, neither one of them come along, but it is important to note that the under the gun opponent is starting to find some limps on his 20 big blind stack and just take a mental note of it. I pick up Jack's next hand and raise over that guy with the giant stack. The button cold calls, the giant stack calls, and on a king high flop, 
even though it doesn't feel great, the guy who's been limping a lot is in every pot. I still think I'm good here. The button, I'm a little worried about, but still, I'm not gonna just give up. I'm not gonna just check. So I see bet a little amount. Both players fold, and even these tiny pots are really significant at this point in the night. All right, now blinds are up to 5K. So we're inching closer and closer to the money. Pots are getting big. And this one, cutoff opens to 11,000. He's the one that I folded aces to earlier. Button, who has all the chips and is playing a lot of hands pre-flop, makes the call. Not a surprise. The small blind comes along as well. He hasn't played many hands. And so now I look down at ace nine offsuit in the big blind and this looks like a potential spot where I could get a little crazy, but because the cutoff is kind of short and he knows that the button has been calling him a lot when he raises, I thought that at this point he is opening a little bit more on the tighter side. So my decision is between calling and folding because four ways my equity is not going to be great with this type of hand. But the reason that I land on call is because every time the button is in a pot, even though he's playing a lot of hands pre, I've noticed that he checks down a lot post flop and the cutoff has been betting a lot post flop but not when the button is in the hand so this is just a perfect scenario to get involved even though it's just a subpar holding so i toss in my call from the big we go four ways to an ace four three rainbow flop so it feels good to flop top pair but we do have to proceed with caution so when the small blind checks it to me i check it Cutoff and button both do the same. So all four of us to the seven of clubs turn. Again, the small blind checks to me. I think that I could consider betting, but again, I want to keep the pot small as we approach the money. This is a good way to adjust when you're approaching the bubble is just try to get to showdown a little more often rather than playing huge pots. So I check, cutoff and button do the same once again. So all four now to the river and the dealer puts out the four of clubs, pairing the board, small blind, Taps the table. It's on to me. Against a cutoff and button that have not shown abilities to bluff or value bet thin, I would be definitely getting some value on this river with a value bet at this point. But this cutoff in particular, this scenario has come up multiple times so far where we're multi-way, it checks all the way to the river and either the cutoff or this particular button with all the chips makes a stab, either with a bluff or with a very, very light hand, like fourth pair. So I'm giving them the opportunity to do that again with a check. Cutoff takes the bait and bets 10,000. Very small bet. The button makes the call. Small blinds out of there and I don't see any reason to reopen the action with a raise. So I make the call as well. Cutoff reveals he has pocket queens. So good thing we didn't get frisky preflop. Definitely would have gotten called. Obviously we would have gotten there, but results wise, I'm glad that I made that read pre and didn't shove over the top or anything. Button sees pocket queens, snap muck. So he had worse than that. We take down the pot with top pair and it feels like a massive win when we're this close to the money. It's extra cushion just in case things go wrong. Okay, I lied last time. This is the last break of the night. It's almost midnight. I have 320K and average is 200 something. <laughs> Six or seven away from the money. So this is really good news. Yay, finally, you're making things happen. My table is so splashy and crazy and it's perfect. So back to the action. Under the gun now opens to 12,000. He's got 30 big blinds to start this hand. Folds to the cutoff, who is a new player to the table, and he decides to three bet. He makes it 33,000. And now I'm sitting here on the button with pocket queens. I have them both well covered. Cutoff has 20 and a half big blinds, so he's really short. This looks really strong, so I'm not sure what to do with pocket queens. The under the gun player, has been somewhat nitty post-flop, but may not necessarily have been tightening up pre-flop too much. And I don't know anything about this cutoff player. So I almost wish that I would have taken out my earbuds when we came back from break and just said hi and maybe engaged in conversation just to get a little info and see how he's feeling about being four away from the money. But I didn't do that this time. I make it 70,000 chips under the gun, you know, cries a little bit and then folds and cut off. Snap goes all in and I obviously call off 53,000 in chips and we get the bad news. 
the horrible news that we are up against two kings. Our opponent holds with pocket kings, secures the double up. It's not crisis mode. We still have plenty of chips. We had that cushion going into the final levels of the night, but it still really, really sucks to be coolered like this just before the end of the day. Fortunately, after only 45 minutes or so longer, we are in the money. We make the money in our first tournament that's on the vlog in 2023. So we're definitely feeling good about this. Yes, we wish we had more chips in the pot, but we're on to day two. Let's make something happen. It is the morning of the first day two of the year and I've got these guys. <laughs> Going for a quick dog walk. I managed to get five hours of sleep with these two, always waking me up same time every day. Uh, so I'm a little bit sleepy. I check out who's at my table. I look up all their Hendon Mob results just to get a feel for the skill and experience level of the people at my table. So headed into day two, we have $1,335 locked up. That's the min cash. And first place is gonna win over $43,000. So let's hope to run good today. We find a great spot here when Under the Gun opens. Our friend Pete, Under the Gun 2, makes the call. And I look down at Ace King offsuit with a short stack. And this is such an easy all in moment. Very excited. So I put in my whole stack. Neither of them call, but it's a nice pickup with all of that dead money out there. Then the blinds go up and this spot was actually kind of close. Under the gun two opens to 16K and I've got 108 in my stack. And looking down at ace jack offsuit, I think it's pretty close. Definitely on the looser side. I would snap fold ace 10 off. I would easily go all in with ace queen off. So ace jack right on the border. I decide to put it in. And when the button calls, I'm not feeling great about it. The under the gun two player folds and we're up against the other ace jack. At least we do chop. I'm really surprised to that he called and the rest of the table seemed surprised that he called that off. Pretty loose, like I said. Happy that when he calls, I actually have a chop. And then we just sit through that period of not getting any hands, no shove spots, no reshove spots, not even really any playable hands from the big blind. Just one of those times during the tournament where you really wish you were picking up a premium. And then the blinds climb all the way up to 5,000, 10,000 big blind. And I look down at Ace King offsuit. We still only have 101,000 easy decision. We just go all in to the middle. Folds all the way around to the big blind who is a massive stack. Look at all those blue towers he has in front of him. And all those neon pink chips are worth 25,000 each. So he has got a massive stack, most likely the chip leader. He's thinking about it. He really doesn't feel great about it. And he eventually says, and puts in the chips. We're way out in front when he flips over King Jack offsuit. So all we need is the hold dealer. Flop looks good. Turn looks good. And the river. <laughs> so we couldn't hold all the way till the end. Oh, that pesky fifth card. Wish we could have just ended on the turn, but here we go. We at least made the money and it wasn't exactly a min cash. We made a little bit more than that. Here we are out of our first day two. Hopefully a lot more to come this year. Well, that was the spot we were looking for. Didn't go our way today. Would have been a really nice time to double up. So get them next time. If you guys are a fan of these types of videos and you like this channel, please consider subscribing to it if you haven't already. When I'm on a downswing in poker, the growth of this channel channel keeps me motivated. It keeps me coming back for more. I want to give you guys good final table experience on the vlog. So anyway, if you haven't already subscribe to the channel, like the video, all that fun stuff. It's totally free to do and I really appreciate it. All right, you guys, until next time, good luck at the tables. Bye. Next on the vlog, Jesse and I take a last minute road trip over to Los Angeles for some California action.